I started thinking about gender in a big and dynamic and critical way when, at 18 years old, the person serving me in a sandwich shop called me Sir. It was the first day I had been outside after cutting my hair short, but it still left me with a lot of questions. It was a word I had never heard before with reference to myself, so I had questions like, what is gender? How do we learn gender? How does it come to be? What does it mean? What does it look like? And especially, what does it feel like? And as I started to pursue answers to these questions, and many more questions that I had, I realized that I was interested in this, and I found it important. I realized that I wanted to hear about other people's experience of gender as well. And that led me to create a project called the Gender Tag Project. What is gender? Even if you've never thought about your gender identity before, you still have one. No one person experiences gender in the exact same way as another person. That is the bottom line for why I am making this video. The gender tag. The gender tag. The uh, gender tag. The gender tag. Gender tag. Gender tag. The gender tag. The gender tag. The gender tag. The gender tag. We're doing the gender tag. Today I'm going to be doing the gender tag. Gender tag. New project, unprecedented, completely magnificent, and a benefit to all of humanity. I find the topic of gender so, so, so interesting. I just find gender to be an incredibly fascinating subject. There are a lot of things we as human beings can still learn about sex and gender. Gender and gender roles are just words and phrases. I'm really tired of the gender binary. I'm still figuring it out, and that's okay. I felt so misinformed and so confused about gender identity that I just made the decision to completely ignore it altogether. Society is still caught up on what a male should be like and what a female should be like. I don't feel like I want so much of a definition. But gender is a reality. It's something that we experience and it is socially constructed. Embrace yourself and love yourself for who you are, regardless of your gender. I am so hopeful that in 50 years, none of the struggles that we're going through right now with gender will even exist. This is not anything I've ever done anything like before. I just hope that if anybody else out there is also confused, that this makes them feel a little less alone. I feel like there's a lot to me that I still don't really know. Now, the Gender Tag Project answered as many questions as it raised for me. And I want to talk about the project and about what I learned from it and especially about how it helped me to understand what gender feels like. But I figure not everybody was there with me in that day in the sandwich shop. I figure we'd better start back at the beginning. I figure we'd better start here with what is gender? Gender describes the characteristics that a society delineates as masculine or feminine. And delineates is kind of the important word there. That means we choose them. That means what is masculine in our society might be feminine in another society, or that it might change over time. Gender is not determined by one's biological sex. So in this country, we recognize two sex designations at birth, male and female. But a male sex designation at birth doesn't guarantee that that person will grow up to feel that they are a man. Gender and, and sex designation, they're separate categories. It's also not binary. What binary means is that we have two options. Socially, we're offered man and woman as options for our genders. But gender actually encapsulates a lot more than that. And it's not somebody else's problem. Today, I'm going to share a little bit about my personal journey with gender. But I also hope that you take away from this talk an understanding of how gender applies to you, an understanding of why maybe gender is your problem, too. Gender is culturally and socially constructed. We know that because if gender was inherent, 
If it was something that we were born knowing how to do, something that we all understood as human beings, then we would expect it to show up the same over time and across different cultures. And it simply doesn't happen that way. Pink is considered a very feminine color in today's society. But in the past, it was considered masculine. And we see different gender systems across cultures. For example, in India, there's a gender called the Hedra, which has been recognized by the government since the 17th century. That's not the same as how we think about gender here. Another example is in Chile. There are people called the Machi, and their belief about gender is that you channel a gender to do certain tasks. That is, that is what they believe about how gender works. And even here in the United States, the indigenous people, there are hundreds of Native American tribes that recognize two-spirit individuals as some other gender. And that's something to be revered. It's not considered a flaw, it's considered a gift. We know that gender is taught and that it is learned. Some of the big ways that we learn gender are by watching role models. So if you are a young person and you feel like you're a boy, and you have a father figure in your life, then you're going to watch him, and you're going to say, my father is going to teach me what it means to be a boy. He's going to teach me what it means to become a man. And by watching your father figure, you will learn a lot about what gender means in our society. And another way that it's enforced is through social learning by your peers. As early as preschool, we start to hear children using phrases against each other, like, big boys don't cry, and girls are not allowed to play that way. And in this way, our gender performance is policed, and these normative ideas about gender are reinforced. And that can be really damaging if you don't fit into some of those normative categories. Gender roles and gender stereotypes are the criteria that we use for this policing. So on the screen, I have a list of some gender roles that we assign to a man in our culture, and some gender roles that we assign to a woman. These are standards that we use for this policing, but when I started to think about gender, I realized that this is how I show up on that list. And that wasn't a clarifying moment for me. That didn't help me get any closer to understanding my gender. In fact, it was confusing. There was no obvious answer, and I had to keep digging. And that led me to gender identity. I started to think about what other categories are there. Our culture says, if you are male, you are masculine, and you will become a man. And likewise, if you are female, you will be feminine and become a woman. And I thought, what if that system is limited? What if there's something we're not considering? What if there's more to this story? What about people who fall in between or outside those categories? What about people who don't fit? What about people who... What about me? Where do I show up? When I thought about gender identity, and especially when I researched it and I looked into it and I learned about it, I found that there are people out there, like me, who feel so far from man or woman that they have begun to create their own language to explain how they show up in the world. Here are some of the identities that people claim. And when I looked further into these words and their meanings, here's the word I chose to describe how I show up, what gender means to me. Non-binary, other than the binary. Not man and not woman, and I'm not sure what else. All of these things, all of these questions, in the pursuit of others' experiences with gender, led me to create the Gender Tag Project. To date, over 600 individual video contributions have been made to the project, and they're compiled in a playlist, which is designed to be a resource to anyone who's looking to learn about gender. The questions for the, for the project cover things like identity and pronouns, and also forms of gender expression like clothing, body hair, cosmetics, and money. And a couple more hard-hitting questions. 
Like, how do you feel about children? Do you want them? And how about dysphoria, which is when the way you feel about yourself doesn't match your body or the sex you were assigned at birth? And finally, misgendering, which is when someone else refers to you as a gender that you don't identify with. Again, what does that feel like? The biggest thing that I took away from the Gender Tag Project is that many of these things are choices. And they're choices that we often fail to recognize are choices. That led me to create what I like to call the critical gender recipe. It's a series of three questions, and it's designed to challenge you to ask yourself why you're doing something. So if you encounter something that is a form of gender expression, let's say this is how you style your hair, you would ask yourself, is this something I'm being told I should or shouldn't do? That is, does society already have an answer for me based on my sex? And then ask yourself, is this important to me personally? And finally, what am I going to do with that information? So to give you some examples from my personal story, one thing that I thought about was becoming a mother. As someone who was assigned female at birth, there's an answer. Our society tells me I should do that. Actually, it tells me I should want that. That should be one of my priorities. Is it important to me personally? Hard question, but I thought about it, and I decided that yes, it is. It's important to me personally to become a mother. So what am I going to do with that information? Well, I'm being critical, and I'm making the choice on my own. So even though I'm making a choice that is in line with what society says for me, it's empowering because I'm making it for my own reasons. Another example, shaving my legs. A little bit harder one. Society has an answer for me. As someone assigned female at birth, I am to be hairless. I am meant to shave from the neck down. <laughs> this is very clear. Is it important to me personally? Whew. It's a little hard to suss out. It's not clear immediately. But through trial and error, I determined that it's not important to me personally. Shaving is tedious, and my leg hair doesn't bother me. So what am I going to do with this information? Well, maybe I should reevaluate my choice to do this, and I'm going to emphasize that maybe, because I don't have to stop shaving my legs. Instead, I have a choice about it. I'm able to recognize the choice there and make the authentic decision for myself. The biggest thing I took away from the Gender Tag Project is that strict gender roles hurt everyone. They hurt trans people, and they hurt non-binary people. But they also hurt men who want to be stay-at-home dads instead of pursue successful careers. And they hurt women who don't want children, or maybe who don't find it important to subscribe to our traditional feminine standards of beauty. And if you think a little more carefully, I bet you could come up with a way that strict gender roles hurt you. Our society tells us that this is how gender works. That from over seven billion people in the world, that there are two ways to experience gender. And I don't know about you all, but I happen to think that this is a much more likely equation. That no two women experience their womanhood in the same way, not the least of which is across lines of socioeconomic status, cultural background, and race. That each individual person has their own unique experience of gender. And what I've shared today is a little bit of a journey that I went on with gender. And I'm providing it in hopes that it can be a framework for you to consider your own gender. My story is just one. Imagine how much we can learn about gender if we're all thinking about it, if we're all willing to be vulnerable and to talk about it. The Gender Tag Project is a series of 10 questions. Anyone is invited to answer the questions. And if you choose, a video of your responses can be uploaded to YouTube. But this isn't really about YouTube. 
This is really about gender. This is really about finding your most authentic self. So even if you just ask these questions to yourself quietly, if you answer them in your journal, you're starting to get critical about what gender means and what it means to live in a gendered world. And this is an ongoing project. Each and every one of you has the power to contribute to what this project can do and who it can touch. I urge you to check out some of the hundreds of videos that are first-hand examples of what gender feels like, and if you feel so inclined, to contribute, because you have your own unique experience of gender, and it helps us all become better. Thank you.